And the other thing is like each, maybe not each day, but each week I'm seeing a video that's more and more disturbing. First, you had the uh, call to prayer. If you look up, uh, if you go to YouTube and you type in, I think it's Women's March, call to prayer, or mm -hmm. call to prayer protest. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, there I saw are, that. But there's like a bunch of them at different protests. Not so just there the is one at the... No, it's an organized funny. action oh to God. get people to do the call of prayer at these leftist protests. Then, on top of this, there is a video going around of people uh, like, you know, liberals, white liberals, yeah. basically doing the, like, getting on your knees and, like, praying towards Mecca out of, like, respect, which is, that's fucking insane. <laughs> And there's like little kids doing it. And I'm like, this is what the fuck is this? Because they That's don't realize. That's indoctrination. It's indoctrination. It's indo and it's on purpose. Like they're being, they're useful idiots, the, uh, the leftists, because they don't realize that like, they're Useful idiots is thing. a good enough term to describe what that is. That's yeah, what, like full-blown retardation. <laughs> I guess. That's fucked up. You want to fucking try to indoctrinate children into this? Uh. Yes. And they're doing it in Sweden too. I've seen that where they like they take the and and in the UK where they take the children to a mosque and they force them to to pray towards Mecca. It's like, look, I get it. Okay, I went to a Catholic school, right? So I I had to go once a week to church and pray, and that was shitty for me. Oh yeah, you uh, you you were raised in like a Christian religion. Uh, sort of. I basically like I grew up in Baltimore City. And, um, the, well, you don't want to go to the public schools in Baltimore city. Okay. So I went to my mother scraped up every cent she had to take, send me to a Catholic school and I hated it. It was absolutely the worst. I, I actively despised Christians for years yeah. after what they did to me there. Like they did terrible things to me. That I don't even know if I should say. I have I have actually a diagnosed PTSD from what they did, and I'm sure you have some fucking shit too. But like, oh yeah, mine's not uh, diagnosed though. I'm just kind of like you know dead well, on the inside, well, I'm, pretty I'm, much. Yeah, me too. You know, that's how you should be as a person. Just be yeah. dead inside. Yeah, it's, it's better than one. <laughs> <laughs> no, they um they did terrible things to me. Like they they used to like they throw piss at me. They oh, would. That's awful. Uh, they, they actually, I used to have really long Pippi Longstocking esque um, braids, and they put matches in them, and I had to have all my hair cut off. Oh, it's awful. Yeah, it was fucking terrible, right? But I don't hate Catholics. I right. was like, they're just fucking asshole kids. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So uh, now, now I'm fucking lost. <laughs> Shit. Um, my my point is that religions can have negative outcomes that's potential but that's the potential of all religions i think there is a specific negative outcome of islam that is much greater and much more common than any other you know it's fascinating here like what you just told me like makes me you know because i like reflect on, back on my experience and it, what's mm -hmm. fa what's fascinating here is that I overall have an issue with organized religion as a whole for exact reasons like that, the damage oh, that they too. do to yep. people. But Islam is such an issue right now that I don't even talk about that. It's almost like I forgot, oh yeah, organized religions are completely fucked up and do completely fucked up things to people. But it's like, it's like, I, I, I it's almost like I'm, I was in this situation where I'm like, all right, you know, fuck religion, arguing against religion. And then, like, a new person came to the table. and But what they do is they're, like, killing people. And it's almost like everyone stopped what they were doing. Like, the atheists and creationists on YouTube kind of stopped what they were doing. They and they're like, oh, you want to kill people? We have to deal with you now. And we're not even, like, talking about the other shit. But I don't see enough. I mean, this is maybe just me, but I see a lot of atheists sort of ignoring the Islam question. Oh, and... Yeah. That's upsetting to me because you're very willing to tackle Christianity, which you should do because Christianity has many fucked up facets. But it seems like the only religion they're willing to decry is Christianity. Yeah. They're not willing to decry Judaism. They're not willing to decry... Um, well, there's not really anything to disagree with about Buddhism. But yeah, uh, they're, they're, very they're not willing... 
<laughs> they're chill. So, but they're they're not willing to to decry the other Semitic religions, and I've always found that a little um, confusing when it looks at when I look at the um, atheist community in YouTube. People like the amazing atheists who I like, but that is them. But it's, yeah, I'm trying to remember. I'm just trying to go through my head. I, I do remember there was like the he had a debate with Kraut and T on terrorists oh attack. yeah but i think he took the i wouldn't say he took the apologist position he took the more like i love crowd i don't know if you follow crowd and t he's I do, a yeah. savage i really like him a lot and um Holy shit, he has yeah. no fucking shits to give about anybody yeah, i i really like him and um yeah, I mean, I'm, I won't say TJ took the apologist position, but it was more like um, now. But I do remember when they went. I think he went on the drunken peasants, and then they ended up kind of like this is. That's what I like about uh, at least the YouTubers that are willing to live stream with people when they have massive disagreements, because in that I case, yeah, in I, that I, case, I, they kind of <laughs> like got together and like they didn't agree, but they, they worked it out where it was more like okay, both sides are kind of making sense here. So, so like right now, there's a bunch of communists who are really, really mad at me and are brigading my channel. And I tried to reach out because a guy made a response video to one of mine. And oh, I really? said, okay. let's have a conversation. He's like, well, I don't really have the time. And I might have the time. And it's like, why don't we talk through this? Because that's what I would like to do rather than just you send your fans over to tell me to kill myself. Right. Which the hilarious thing is the video is about how communists are super violent and not reasonable and then he sends all these commies over to my channel to tell me to kill to myself super violent and not reasonable yeah <laughs> yeah oh it's like oh <laughs> thank Thanks. you you're yeah. proving my point <laughs> thank you what do they call I that just, that's like a controlled experiment like they, they're giving you like uh it's like evidence well, that, like, self-fulfilling prophecy yeah, but, yeah. um I'm not, I'm not sure about anything else. It was just funny. It's like, and actually just yesterday I had some girl comment on it was like, communists don't want anyone to die. Only fascists do. It's like, well, would you like to look at what your friends who came from the same video that you came from have said? <laughs> I, I, communists are, but they are totally funny. pro death of Nazis and they call everyone that disagrees with them a Nazi, at least at this point is. Oh yeah. Pretty much no, happening. they call me a Nazi because I said, I didn't think Richard Spencer deserves to get punched because I'm a fucking uh, limp wristed faggot pacifist who thinks that nobody deserves to get punched. Yeah. Unless you're punching first. Unless you first. Yeah, of course. exactly. <laughs> if you punch me first, yeah, then you deserve it. But otherwise fuck off. Um, <sighs> communists yeah, that, are, that's wild that that's really where we are here where like even if you don't want to get involved and you are i mean i'm, I'm not necessarily i mean you made a video you got involved but like I, i'm just thinking about twitter and right. like people who are just more like neutral they're, they're like well we'll punch you too you can't be you can't well you saw they spray that on the wall at berkeley which is that uh, liberals get the bullet yes. too yep they have they have no morals they just want no. to cause violence and and they will say that they're allowed to because the fascists are out here and there's all these fascists who are gonna kill everybody it's like excuse me could you point to me one fascist who has engaged in violence nope. <laughs> yeah i mean it, it's very few and far between and um you know, it's funny, uh, Sargon's petition, that was a, quite a while ago, and I remember when I saw that, I was still kind of like, I was never really an SGW, but I was definitely on the left, and I'm like, ah, I don't know, and then I was like, well, let me research what they're actually teaching these kids, and then I'm like, holy shit, this shit's ridiculous, I agree with this, but what's interesting is, it seems like now we're getting the fruits of that, like, right. when he came well, out with that, it was were... like a warning. Most of us were on the left. I mean, like I said, I was a libertarian, which is a little different, but I have never, I didn't vote for Obama, but I certainly have never had any racist or any ist opinions. I've always yeah. been, my opinions were always uh, economic, not right. social. Yeah. Um, see, now this is another thing I, I, I wonder about people that consider themselves Trump supporters, because it, it's, it's a fascinating thing, whereas it used to be before Trump, People who were Republicans most of the time were very dedicated to a very set 
standard of principles, conservative principles, anti-gay ah. marriage, anti-abortion, blah, 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 blah. Ah, Whereas those now, are neocons. Right. But like, that's what I mean. It's like now there's there has been a flood coming into the Republican Party of normal people. I think, yes. I think, well, it's partially because Obama was the great divider. He oh, made yeah. people hate each other. Yeah, he really and, did. And um, so with people, you know, like me, who I don't know where the fuck I probably if I took like the the political compass test, I I probably used to be like bottom left, but now I'm like bottom right. So I'm on the libertarian side always. I'm always very libertarian, and um, just like Obama, he incentivized them through his very divisive uh, programs and policies to switch from sort of. Well, also, he switched from wherever they were to where they are now, but also because the Republicans were religious, right? They were yeah. all about this uh, abortion and yeah, weed yeah. and shit that, like, I don't agree with at all. I'm I'm, I'm pro-weed. I'm very pro-weed. I would yeah. love to have a smoke right now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, But the idea is that, like, we've changed because that's not where we are anymore. And... and yeah. Part of that point is because the the, um, the neocons, they were leftists in the 70s, and then they moved to the Republican Party. They called that the big switch, but that's it wasn't actually a big switch. They just moved because they didn't like the new left, so they moved to the right. They held their entire um, premise was on this religious right, this religious Central America uh, tactic. Yeah, that's all they had, and it's stupid and it's ridiculous. But the fact of the matter is that being right wing, at least in America, has nothing to do with being religious. It has nothing to do with with a lot of this shit. It, it just <laughs> it doesn't mean that you're anti gay. It doesn't mean that you're anti you know weed. It, it means that you're more conservative opinions because you want to conserve something about America. That's the mental adjustment that I am struggling with. The idea that, first of all, I would even be a conservative. It's just, yeah, it's, it has shifted. That's really what a lot of this is. A lot of this has shifted. And because I, I saw it mm -hmm. the other day, um, the, the guy in New York who used to write for, I forget which publication, it was a gay publication. He wrote a very like neutral piece on Miley Annopolis and he gets attacked. Mm -hmm. And then he. Well, yeah, I, 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 I. Um, covered Milo very unbiasedly or with, with very little bias as much as I saw but then like when Crouton T did his thing on um, on Milo I was like I think that's a little bit extreme but I two things about that first one I was like who is he talking about as far as now he gave an example of a person I, I had never seen before I don't know. I, like I don't know Wesley. who that is. See, I don't know who that is. Anyone arguing, in my opinion, that like a thirteen-year-old is an adult or any of that, I'm not buying that shit. But no, that's the the part I had issue with is it seemed like when you take really old material from somebody that they wrote, you know, five to ten years ago, I don't love that. Mm -hmm. Like now, the the business shit, if that's true, I haven't researched that. Then okay, that's fine. If if he genuinely genuinely didn't, uh, yeah, pay I people. I was upset about that. That that's, seems really that's fucked. fucked up. Yeah, that's fucked up. The like, oh, you used to kind of be an SJW. Well, like, I mean, if I was writing uh, and you read the shit that I wrote eight to ten years ago, I mean, you know, sure. I, I don't really. So yeah, that part I didn't necessarily agree with. Um, but I wasn't aware of people defending like his actual comments because I came out against what he said. I said that he's a victim of child molestation and I'm not going to tell him how to feel about his experience. Yeah. And then yep. the only other thing was the the party. I think he should have reported that to the police. I didn't I hear anyone defending an that. that. I only had an issue about that because he doesn't have. So the on, if you watch Carlton Tiesel video, there was that guy. I forget what his name is. The guy who's like icon as a weasel or something um i feel terrible but it was necessary for him to call that out in an in interview with uh joe rogan because he could be sued and everyone's like well he's it's deserving of that it he needs that and i'm like oh, people were arguing he should have named names right there oh no there's no yeah. way you can do that no i wouldn't No, that. that's what i that's, okay, that's what i fucking thought yeah because no, no. like he doesn't have any proof and it's like well, yeah. he should have just sucked it up and taken it taken all the suing or the or no. the 
legal. And it's like, no, 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 no. At the time. I, right, that's what I'm saying. At the time, he should have been like, that's fucked up. Let's handle this. I don't give a fuck. Yep. That's, yeah. yeah, I think he's wrong for that. But the fact that they were like, why doesn't he say it on Joe Rogan's podcast 10 years later? It's like, well, because he's going to get fucking sued. And he yeah. has no evidence that nothing is going to change. It's just going to put him in jail. And there is... And there is also the political aspect that regardless of what you think about what he said, there is, it was an absolute mm -hmm. hit job and it was a completely coordinated attack. Um, that's, I mean, that's, Oh yeah. That, um, and then, yeah, George Takai, I think it was valid to bring up George Takai and it was the same argument. I think it was too. I, he, he was a victim and I'm not going to tell him how to feel, but if you're going to take away all the shit from Milo, then you need to take all the shit away from George Takai. Well, there's research that shows it's it's sort of along with um, Stockholm syndrome, where young children who are involved in these types of relationships, they or these these sexual encounters. I'm not gonna say relationships because I don't think they are. I think they're, yeah, I they're predatory. Absolutely. And um, do um, they work it through in their heads to be something other than what it was, which was right. rape. And that's very, very typical of what we see of children survivors of sexual assault. They typically um, reframe it in their minds to look at it positively because it's a hard thing to deal with. To, to say I was raped, to say I was raped as a child, to say, you know, I was defiled in this way. Yeah. Isn't it much easier to just say um, I enjoyed it, I was a predator? Yeah cognitively in terms of your yeah. psyche so yeah i think that's what happened i think he just had he and george decay probably both just uh you know they rationalized what happened to them yeah. i don't think it's right but i don't blame them for what they say yeah i i agree with that and then and then it also gets into the thing about like okay you have these journalists that even though I have no respect for them, they, they have a lot of power and they're able to pick people that they want to and completely destroy them. Um, and so we have kind of a bit of a unprecedented situation where you have people like, uh, who's the, the guy from BuzzFeed? He's got like a hit list already that he's taken out, at least three people. Oh, the I guy, don't know. Uh, Sam Hyde, he took out. He took out. I love um, Sam Hyde, though. Yeah, no, he, he, it, it was over bullshit. That apparently, there was some sort of uh, swastikas in the. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then that they, was not they, true. They did an incredible like search through the entire season, and there's not a single yeah. swastika. Um, he's a fucking Bernstein, asshole. I think. Joe Joseph Bernstein, I think. Oi vey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, <laughs> he did. Who was the other one? He did. Uh, I forget. I did a video on him. He has like I think three people that, that he took out. And this is not. You can't have. You can't have this. This is not. There has to be some sort of pushback. I guess YouTube. Oh, and the other thing, yep. did you see, did you see, um, Sargon had an independent, uh, journalist, uh, d uh, try to dig on, um, Ben Fritz and found that there's this whole connection between him and Maker and Disney. He was one of the oh, Wall Street well, Journal I writers. Seen that actually, no, I know who Ben Fritz is. I know he yeah. was one of the Wall Street Journal articles, Blech. but yeah, um, no, I hadn't seen that video. Yeah, I'll have to I, check it out. Yeah, I just don't know like what I think it was more like tweets. I don't really think he made a video on it, but it was. But it, what I don't really know if there's anything other than what we're already doing and calling people out. If there's really anything we can do to change that, and and I don't think the Wall Street Journal is going to change. Well, they might change when they realize that like people don't like that and they're not going to watch. But I don't know what else they can do because they they're stuck in the old you know media mode the old guard they're old they're old media yeah. and that that's yeah i don't know if they will ever figure it out that's sort of the problem is that like all we can do as people on youtube is to continually call them out continually point out their flaws and point out their inconsistencies and point out their lies yes yeah. and yeah. if they choose to to change uh we can't otherwise they will die though by the way Yes. They will eventually I, die. Uh, that would be wonderful. Um, yeah. <laughs> the only thing that I have seen that is a strategy that I was like, oh, that's new, is um, the Hollywood Reporter had interviewed Casey Neistat. CNN basically yeah. bought him for $25 million. And I saw, yeah. 
Yeah. So what Neistat said that they were doing with CNN is he said some shit like, well, right now um, millennials have a shield of bullshit that they put up between acting like that's a bad thing, like they're, they're highly skeptical people, which that's a that's a fabulous thing. And then, but he viewed it as something that you have to try to push away, not with facts, but with who you are because people trust him. And he specifically said, they will listen to you no matter what you say, if they trust you. And I think what I thought about with that is yes. people like YouTubers and CNN knows like people like Philip DeFranco has huge reach. I think they're going to try to buy a lot of these people off and make it seem like, and like kind of have them deliver the narratives to the people and the people will, will listen because they trust the person, not because they're like, that's why I always try to make sure when I'm going over stuff, I'm like showing people like, this is why I'm saying this, not just because I'm right. You know what I mean? Oh, that's something called source credibility, and it's something that I thought about because the media, the mass media, no longer has source credibility, meaning right. that in the past we would have believed some of the times, oh, I can read whatever I, I read here, and I will get the information even if it has some spin. It has credibility. That's no longer the case with any of the mainstream media. I can't think of a single outlet that has source credibility at this point. I think I mentioned before, like, uh, Russia Today is okay, Reuters yeah. and AP. Those are the only ones that, and they, they don't have inherent credibility, but they're like, however, what can happen is that, so there's this thing called the mere exposure effect. And what the mere exposure effect says that the more you're exposed to someone, the more you like them. So the okay. more people watch your videos, the more they're going to like you as a person, right? Mm -hmm the more they're going to give you credibility. So people like Philip DeFranco and other people online who have these large audiences, this is what terrifies the legacy media because they don't like the fact that people on YouTube who just buy and exposing themselves and uh, to you know public outlets and by putting out media, that they are making people like them through mere exposure. And as such, part of mere exposure effect is that it also makes you trust the person more. So people are more likely to trust Philip DeFranco, a whole bunch, than they are CNN at this point. And that's why I think we have the upper hand and why I think we have, we will ultimately win the war. Because people who watch YouTube will come to like us, come to trust us, and as long as we hold ourselves to some academic or journalistic integrity. Yes. I that's a very positive viewpoint. I like that. That's very good. I don't I don't disagree with it. I just um I'm also I just I don't know, it's like my nature. I'm just very like observey, just kind of okay. Oh no, I, being negative is probably the better way to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um let me ask you this. So uh, you, you bring up an interesting point in regards to holding each other accountable. There's the debate now, which is some people fall on the side of, well, you shouldn't criticize members of the skeptic community because it's the community. Oh. I completely reject that. Now, maybe it's because I have the, the advantage of being new and not have any relationships formed. Um, but I don't see that as, and I'm not suggesting that Sargon, when he says that, is having an effect. I think really what comes down to this is I think Sargon's too nice. I think he's too nice. I think yeah. he's too, like, that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you want to think very positively and big, that's great. I, I just, um, I think that I, there's no way I would couch criticism of, as long as it's valid, I would never couch criticism. Val of another validity is yeah, the absolutely. important part, yeah. Yeah. I like Carl. I think you're right. He is too good of a guy, maybe sometimes. Yeah. Um, I. I don't know. Um, okay. Yeah. I'll I'll just fucking say it. I think Armored Skeptic is a bit of a dick. I still oh, yeah. watch him, but I think he's an asshole. I think his he's got a huge ego, and like that's the kind of guy I would call out because. Uh, and I have actually because I think like. His, he claims to be apolitical and to be unbiased. Not him personally, but his character. Right. I think that's absurd. Yeah. Um, standpoint. That's an absurdity. Yeah. And, you know, I also think, yeah, he's a bit of a dick. I love his content, but eh, yeah, we're allowed I to call people out when they're fucking up. 
I used to subscribe to him, um, and uh, the kid, now the stuff with him with Candid kind of came out like I mean I don't remember when yeah. that was, but I don't I don't think I no. yeah w the thing was is like I used to subscribe to him and watch his videos, but the 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 Candid counter video he did when I actually thought it was uh, I thought it was brilliant because I had so much respect for him. I thought it was and I'm not saying I have no respect for him. I just say that was like a major fuck up. But that video I originally thought was satire. I thought, okay, this guy oh. has a he has a non disparagement agreement, and what he's done is made a video so ridiculous that people are going to be like, oh, okay, no, because I mean, what were some of the things he's saying in that video? The one is like, oh, yeah, yeah. I as a skeptic would love it with a situation where, you know, people's comments are getting filtered through, whether it be Wikipedia or Twitter for accuracy. And I'm like, oh, this is totally, that is the absolute opposite of what you would want as a skeptic. And, uh, but it turned out it was real. And Andy like doubles mm -hmm. down and it's just not, he deserved the criticism. No. I'm not gonna say that. Well, I think he's in it for the money a lot, which is maybe he wasn't initially, but, um, that does seem to be the, and I feel bad. I really liked his content, but he, I, it was like a lot of people like back when atheism was the thing on YouTube <clears throat> and it was like cool to fucking f make fun of religious people, which yeah. I don't blame. It's very easy to make fun of religious people. They're very funny. Yeah. But <laughs> I think for some of them, when that ended, when that time passed, it was like, what do I do now? And they got a Oh, you lost. can see that with certain ones, like Dusty. Dusty. Oh, uh, my God. Dusty. He oh has no God. idea what he's doing. He's completely, I feel bad for him. And, like, I'm a, like, I'm small compared to him. But what's weird is, like, on some of these, if you look at Social Blade, like, even though they have, like, 100,000 um, subscribers, some of it's the numbers. what their view count looks yeah, like. Exactly. <laughs> and, um, and the other thing was back then, See, I didn't make an account back then, but I watched a lot because I was coming mm -hmm. out of the cult. And the other thing about the religious right is they were a major threat at the time. They were trying to put creationism in schools. So, like, they were a legitimate threat. So, well, I don't you know, when that Thunderfoot, either. what's that? Not either. I'm on the oh, right wing, but I don't want fucking religion in schools. I, oh, I, I do. Agree. Now, here's the thing I do want school choice. So, if you want to go to a Catholic school, if you want to go oh, to certainly. a Episcopalian school, that's fine. Absolutely. But. I don't want that fucking shit in a public government funded school. No, no, I, I, I agree. I, I agree with that. But yeah, that was basically kind of like where it was. It was like a, a, it, they were more of a threat. And then, um, yeah, that you're right. It's like a lot of them couldn't figure out what to do next. And I mean, I thought Armored Skeptic did a pretty good job adjusting. He did videos on these yeah. ridiculous, like, all white people are racist um, things. And he it's also just did this... a video on MGTOW that I disagree with, so. Yeah. And I don't know if you, how do you feel about MGTOW? I don't get it. I, like, to each his own. I, well, let me, let me make sure I fully understand it. Let me make sure I fully understand it. You have absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with women. It's Am I basically like, no, no um. No, my no. It's it's that the um, legal system in the United States is absolutely um, set up to benefit women in cases of marriage and uh, child rearing. And as such, they don't. It's not that they don't want anything to do with women. It's that they don't want to marry or have children with women because uh, of how fucked up that is. And I support that a hundred percent. I would agree with that. That's that's factual. I. Um, it's so fucked. It is. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think I could support that to the degree where I'm, like, not having relationships with women or, like, there's just no, no. way. Well, you're a straight man. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, it's not, it's no, not no, happening. No, no. It's not about um, sexuality because a lot of them actually have sexual relationships and, and ongoing relationships with women. The idea is about the fact that women, they control everything in Western society, at least in U.S control everything in terms of um how we're able to manage uh interpersonal relationships and child rearing i would agree i mean i would think some of that comes down to like individual guys i, I mean with with child really are you saying like like legally you're talking about like if you, like she takes the guy to court he's fucked he's only gonna get like what every other weekend or 
Are you saying okay, like so in it, general, because yeah, guys are generally because, kind of weak because we don't really teach them no, to guys be aren't masculine? Weak. Well, maybe we are not teaching them to be masculine, but the, the legal system is absolutely set up to favor women. And right. you can see this as recently there was a thing where it was like a bunch of women like raped a dude with a pole and it was like, oh. I will punish you the same as a man. And that's what the mm. judge said. He actually admitted that he he treats women more lightly. But my in my family, at least, I was... um. I love my mom, but you know, she was she has mental issues and was not right. able really to take care of me as much as my dad was. And it was just a, a no brainer. They just said, "Yep." And the fact is that uh, that's why I went to an all black school, and that's why I went to you know the all Catholic school, and you know all the kind of other shit that happened to me was because it was like your dad's not allowed to take care of you. Oh, so so. Even though it was clear that you would have been in under better care with your dad, they were like, "No, yeah. she's a, she's your mother." Wow. Okay. She's my mom. Yeah. That's I actually gotcha. it's actually extremely common. If you look into it, that's pretty much par for the course. That they will just say, "Yep, woman." Therefore, you get the kid. Yeah, I have seen that. I mean, I definitely agree with that. I just I don't know. Like, I think uh, a lot of what you see might be exaggeration. I had, I was under the impression oh, sure. that they were like totally like we're not even we're just going to play video games and not even deal with women and you know. But, oh, well, I don't know about that, but yeah, from what I've seen from people who are MGTOW, the and what I've talked to them about is that like um, because also generally speaking, yes, uh, women can claim things like I was raped. Women oh right, can claim absolutely. Things, like they can make any claim they want in a divorce proceeding and guess what they'll pretty much get believed and that's sort of the problem and guys just have to say that it doesn't matter what they say actually that they're going to to either go to jail or they're going to get fined for it and so that's the pro that's why i support migtow because i understand until this the the system in the united states changes i understand why people why men would want to go their own way yeah, but I guess how would you define, like, what's the difference between that and just, like, being, like, a men's rights advocate? Like, is it the same thing? Is it more extreme? I mean, what? Hmm. how would you classify that? I mean, me personally, I'm <laughs> I'm an advocate for equality. But right, right. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's not feminism. But <laughs> yeah, that's um, true. But I would say, uh, geez, in terms of it's a men's rights advocacy, I guess you could call me a men's rights advocate. Um, I, I'm an advocate for egalitarianism. And so when I see a, that um, child custody laws and the way that marital uh, divorce laws work, ah, I, I got to say there's an issue because there's a definite difference between female and men. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, so I guess part of the problem is like uh, some of the people that maybe like Bering will do a video on, maybe they're mm -hmm. more the extreme, like not even representative of like what an a actual sane <clears throat> MGTOW is. Oh, no, there's crazy ones. Yeah. There's a thing. Like, MGTOW is like feminism in that it gets co-opted by psychopaths. Gotcha. So yeah it's un that's the thing you can't say it like like i support migtow because i understand where you're coming from and then there's a crazy person because there's there's basically two types of of crazy people that co-opt migtow the first one is a um very masculine like hyper masculine dude who has a very issues you know and yeah. he hates women he hates women but the way that he um, expresses his hatred is by fucking all of them and okay. by showing how cool he is by by fucking all these women that's the right. first type the second type is the perma virgin who he just hates women because he can't get any puss yeah. and that's it and that's the only reason he hates them and that's but the average dude who's a MGTOW the average dude is concerned with like you know the issues of divorce and the issues of child rearing and those are the main issues so he might even have a relationship. He's just going to be like, we're going to, like, at best, you'll live here, but we're definitely not doing anything legal, or you're going to be on the massive birth control. Like, well, they, they could they could have a, a common law marriage, actually, even. Or it, it's just the idea that, that um, because 
of how marriage works, it, it absolutely prioritizes the woman. That's a hundred percent correct. And so, yeah, they could have a, a, a common common law marriage. They could, it's not even like just sleep on the couch, you whore, you know, <laughs> they can have a very loving, <laughs> loving relationship, but it's just not going to be, um, going to be the same as a, a marriage. But on, not only legally, it could be the same functionally, just only legally, not the same. I got gotcha. you. So yeah, I think I was under the impression just based off of who was speaking the loudest, and that generally seems to be the lunatics with most of the groups. It's, it's always going to be the lunatics who speak the loudest. Now, by the way, like I said, there are crazy people in the MGTOW thing. Copaths. I just support them because I feel bad because of how women yeah. have co-opted yeah. society, and it's like, mm, we gotta fix this. And I mean, I imagine that like a lot of it has to do with like they've probably been in very brutal situations and like with women, and they're like, never again. There's no way I'm gonna be in that type no, of thing. Not even again, because really? it's like you can be in a in a common law marriage. It's more about the law. It's mostly about the law, not about the the um, anything else. Not about like the physical aspects, because it's like I'll. I'll date this woman for seven years and we'll we'll get common law married but i don't want well now that's an issue actually because now there are um statutes in place that say that even common law marriages where the woman can take half of the guy's actions just through a common Holy law shit. marriage yeah right it's fucked you're totally screwed like men are screwed and and it's it's unusual for women to come out and say holy shit this is fucked but um that's one of the reasons that I wanted to make my channel, among others, is that to talk talk out about. And I'm not the only one. There's plenty. Like um, the Honey Bear, or is it called Honey Badger? Honey Badger Collective. They um, women in that Karen Straw Strawum, I think. Uh, oh yeah, I know. Yeah. About, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who talk out about you know men's rights issues, which which do need to be talked about. And when every single person in society is talking about women's rights issues. Yeah, we needed it a little bit about the issues that are related to men. Do you see any like reform happening or are they like way far off from that as far as legally? Um I think we're way far off. I think um it's going to be a very long time before we see any type of help coming to men. We're not going to see any men's shelters. We're not going to see because men, men are, I think, when I looked it up, I'm trying to think now, 40% of, of domestic abuse victims, th that um, statistic could be very wrong. That's off the top of my head. There are men, though, who are, who are domestic abuse victims, and they don't get any support. They don't get any care. Yeah. So... Yeah, I think I'm going to do a video on that. I I, uh, I have a a guy that that uh, messaged me on Twitter, and he's like going through like a really rough situation in mm -hmm. regards to uh, I think it's a law in the UK or whatever. And I was like, oh, I think I'll just tie this into like uh, what's happening in this country and what's happening over there. Um, so yeah, all right. Well, that's something to definitely uh, it's look into. Yeah, it does seem definitely fucked. I remember when they tried to open. I remember reading a story that there was a men's shelter that was supposed to be open and the feminists complained to the degree. Do I have this right that the yep. guy like killed himself or some shit? Yes. Oh. Yes, that's correct. Um, yeah, and because they don't want men's shelters because they don't care because now ask any bedroom feminist what is the definition of feminism? And she'll say, uh, it's the men and women being equal. <laughs> and it's like, okay, so why don't you care about men's issues? Men don't have any issues. Uh, fucking kill yourself. Like, I know. It's like, uh, Jeez. It's absolute insanity. There was a video Andy Worski did pointing out how there mm -hmm. seems to be a lack of bedroom feminists right now. That, like, there seems yeah. to be a definite, like... Uh, winning of the war in that regard. I saw that. Yeah, it was fucking neat. It's like I hope they're all fucking gone. Yeah, I mean, it, like the biggest ones right now are like Riley Dennis and. Um, <laughs> I have a video right now. It's what I've I've recorded. It's all recorded. It just needs to be fucking edited <laughs> about Riley Dennis. Yeah, I forget what the latest shit he said was. I just kind of like, 
I see so many people cover and I'm like, they can handle him. Like the last time I did a video on him, I was exasperated by the end and I was like, fuck it. It I'll is just exasperating. It's terrifying. I think, I think it was the video that if I am not open to getting fucked in the ass by a dick, that I'm somehow. That's what I'm uh, doing right now. That's like, my video I'm making. Because <laughs> I'm like, I know it's old as fuck, but it's like, I want to just talk about how, like, because I wanted to relate him to fatties who are like, what the oh, yeah. fuck? Right, right. 600 yeah, and you're biased. I, I just my point is like you don't own people's bodies, liberals. Like you don't get to <laughs> fucking why these people who are so like slavery was literally the worst thing that ever happened ever forever. Except now I own your body and yeah. you have to fuck me. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's that's one of the most insane videos I've ever seen. The the thinking oh, behind that, that is he, unbelievable. He gave a he gave a response to it. That's what I'm actually making the video on. Is his response to his video? No. Is he like he gives like a whole fucking th actually I don't know where it is, but he gives like a whole fucking thing where he talks about like can you're not allowed to be rude to me because I know what I'm talking about and you don't. Oh my god, he's like a child. He's a he total is, child. Dude, he's fucking Milo, not Milo Yiannopoulos, the little gnome, the little oh, yeah. dwarf. All he's people are racist. Uh, Milo Stewart, right? Yeah, Milo Stewart, yeah. He's fucking her. And and the thing is that... Wait, wait, that are you being that, serious? Sure, but oh, do you oh. don't think so? I don't he, know. He, I, I just oh, haven't he's made all attention. this. He's made all these videos, all these videos with her, and it's like about about trans shit. And I'm I, my uh, perception is that like he's fucking her. His whole thing is that I'm a man, but I'm a lesbian. Hello, <laughs> lady, yeah. you have a vagina. I would like to put my binary pee pee in Great. there. <laughs> oh my god! I remember uh, I was I watching a video. What's that? I said, I no. guarantee that's what's happening. <laughs> You're probably right. I remember like a while ago, um, Blair Wright was doing a, a live stream with Jeff Holiday, And she basically, because mm -hmm. they were reviewing a video they did, she's like, they just need to fuck each other. If they just fuck each other, they will realize yeah. that like they're full of shit and then they'll like join everyone else. But, oh my God. Yeah. I, I remember mean, that. I've, I've, I've watched that stream. I think they're doing it. I, I absolutely think that's what's going on. It's just like, uh, how do you buy that? Like some dude, well, some person claiming, who's a dude, claiming to some be dude. a girl. And then it's like, uh, I am a, a girl, but I'm also a lesbian. So like, I'm basically back to like, you're basically like a walking, like, like dog with chasing his tail. Like it's complete. Now, of course, <sighs> saying this, I am apparently the most horrible person in the world, but that's just, I, I mean, this that. is. Like it's bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. That's all. So I have. You don't have to co-sign. You don't have to co-sign. So. No, no, I agree with you 100. percent But yeah. I have a friend who came out. She is like 40 years old, so not a young person. Mm -hmm. So not a person who's going to be really benefited by hormone therapy. Right. As a lady, but she also came out as a lesbian. Now she. I mean, she was born a man and has lived her entire life as a man. And then she gets upset and texts me and is like, how come nobody at the gay bar wants to fuck me? Says, well, honey, I don't say this to her, by the way. Well, honey, maybe it's because you have a dick and you look like a man. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, my God. Wow. And like, what is the deal with the fuck entitlement? I've never felt entitled. Like, you just get your shit together and you fucking make it happen. Like, I don't no, understand blaming other people. To, this is my video I'm about to put out. I, I don't have a good topic, basically, so I wanted to make this video about it. Well, I do, but sometimes, like, oh, I have a question for you about this. Um, Absolutely. How the fuck do you fucking always come up with good topics? Like, you just read the, read the news and are, you're, like, always on top of it. Yeah, like I am a bit. I have to. I figure once once things like settle down and I'm able to like make some definitive decisions about my business and this channel, it'll get a little less like, 
you know, doing it all the time. But yeah, it's it's basically, yeah, I'm just constantly reading, constantly. I have CNN on. I'm always like, I don't even like view it that way. Like, I appreciate you saying that, but like, it's just kind of like, I just. I don't know. Social media is a very good news aggregator. And, you know, yeah. you just kind of see like, all right, this is yeah. crazy. That's crazy. This is bullshit. We'll do all these things. And that's pretty much, uh, you know, the other thing is, though, like, I, I can't write anything out. I just turn the mic on and talk. Yeah, I've so, heard you say that. I have yeah. to write everything. I think that's why it takes me so much longer is that, like, I got to write everything down or else I'm going to sound like a fucking potato. Yeah, like, I, I, I was originally going to do this channel over the summer, and I was kind of just working on a video, and I'm like, I'm like, this is going to take forever. And then one day I was watching V, and uh, I realized that he doesn't, he just talks. I love V. Yeah. And I'm like, well, wait, if, I'm like, I'll just do that and see what happens. And that's basically, I said, I figured as I long like as I can do it. Me, oh, thank you. That's very, that's very high praise. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, right, yeah. yeah, he's fucking hilarious. But um, yeah, I was like, well, if he can do that, I, I could, I, I'll at least try. And if it fails, then I'll make an adjustment. But, and then, yeah, it just turned out like I'm apparently able to, for the most part, like if like a tab crashes, uh, I'll, I'll edit that out, but I do very little editing. And that's the thing, like I, like I, like your videos are fantastic. The graphics are great. Oh. And that's the th one of the things I was wondering, like, because you had mentioned a, a collaboration and I thought, when I started to think about it, I'm like, you know what, this is gonna be, I don't know how this is gonna work. We figured out like live streaming is definitely the best way to do it because I was like, how how is that gonna work? Like, I'm gonna like, write down what I say, because, you know, because no, I have no graphics, you have good graphics. Yeah, this is way better. But, uh, oh, so oh. I, yeah. I know we're on Go live ahead. stream, but did you see, I know, you know what, I you want to, okay, okay. Well, I, I know we're on live I was going to say, we can wrap up and then you can. Okay, I can talk to you about, a little bit about other shit, but like, um, did you see, I, I commented on one of your videos, I'm sure you didn't see about a rabbit. But live streams because you were talking about like a uh, screen sharing. Yeah. No, I can't. My comments are completely unmanageable. Yeah, I know they're crazy. Yeah. Um. So Rabbit is what Jeff Holiday uses, and it's R A B dot I T. Let me write that down one second. I'll send it to you too on Twitter. Oh right, yeah, do that definitely. Yeah, I I have tried three different programs and I've tried to get the audio to play through videos because one of the things I was hoping I don't have the ability now is because I think like if you and I, I think like you make me laugh and I figure that we if if we were to debunk videos from like the Young Turks, I would love that, dude. It's possible that like we could do something very entertaining, but the problem is I is think that we get along really well actually too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think that like, but, but three programs in and I, every time I try to play a video, people are like, yeah, I can't hear it. And mm -hmm. I'm like, apparently that's like some sort of technological marvel to be able to do that. Because when I look yeah, on try Google, rabbit. that's what Jeff Holiday does. Yeah. Yeah. Cause people on Google is like, oh, it's very difficult. You have to go through, through all this shit. And I'm like, how is this? Like we, we're walking around with like laptops in our pocket and we can't figure out how to do video over the thing, you know what? Let me let me close this out. I mean, let, let's close this out, and, and I want to show you something. Um, so yeah, like, wait, there, can I any... talk to you for a second? Oh wait, why don't I just pause it? Right? Can I just pause it? Yeah, pause it. <laughs> well, I know we cut off a little bit quickly there, but did you enjoy this video? Yeah, because Hard Bastard and I are going to potentially do another one on talking about the Young Turks and how disingenuous and completely and totally fucked they are. <laughs> if you're just here from my channel, then please go over to Hard Bastard's channel for the first part of this video. And more than that, be sure to subscribe to his channel. He destroys the mainstream media every second of every day. I can't compete. I can't keep up. He is the master at destroying the mainstream media, so please, please subscribe. If you also enjoyed the video, you should, of course, subscribe to me and like this video. But again, be sure to be on the lookout for new stuff down the pipeline. Yeah, it's, it's pretty neato. If you enjoyed this video, again, be sure to like and subscribe, both on me and on Hard Bastard. I'm Aiden Paladin, Altana Volt.